Hello and welcome, Shotcut 18.05 version is out now and it has a huge unexpected new feature. It's basically the reverse of an April Fool's. We have keyframes and Shotcut now. I made a quick video yesterday about this already. Now let's dig deeper. Let's, now let's look at all the new features in 18.05 because there's more than just one keyframe effect. There's actually multiple effects, uh, filters as Shotcut calls them that have keyframes and they are different kind of keyframes actually. I showed size and position in the previous video. It's awesome, it's the most useful thing in my humble opinion, but there's more. And we're gonna take a look at these as well. They have partially more complex keyframe systems. Apart from that, we have 5.1 six channel audio. Surround sound is a short for this. And apart from that, we also have a finished translation GIF animation export works again, less memory use, especially for the rotate and the size and position filters. Rotate is the most useful filter for zooming in up until now, because now this rotate filter does not have keyframes yet, as far as I understand, we're gonna check it out. But size and position filter, this one has keyframes and it's extremely useful because of that simply. And it's great that this is now more performant. And the default export settings are also producing smaller videos now because some technical changes have been made. Basically less keyframes in the output, if I understand correctly. Different kind of keyframes. You can download Shotcut from its website. It's free as always. You can have 64 or 32-bit Windows installers or portable zip files. There's a Mac version, there's a Linux version. And I personally have a feeling that downloading from the Git releases page actually has a better uh, download performance sometimes. Sometimes it feels that if you download from the Shotcut website directly, which links to GitHub releases, then it might be uh, slow. So if you go to the Shotcut GitHub page and click releases, here you have the links directly and, well, Git won't have the feeling that you are uh, leeching off of it. So the download might be faster. Maybe. Also here you can see the file sizes. It's quite interesting. Windows 32-bit version, only 102 megabytes, uh, and Windows 64-bit version, actually 260. All right, as you can see, here we are in Shotcut. It's completely blank. We're gonna check out all the effects that have keyframing now. Let's enable the timeline. There are some issues with the font size. That's because I did uh, this Windows internal scaling up to 125%. Let's just ignore that for now. I will hopefully find the time to report these little bugs. But uh, let's focus on the filters for now. We're gonna start by dragging in a video. And now Shotcut crashes. This is a new, well, not a feature, obviously. It is a new problem, but you just close the program and restart Shotcut. And the workaround, I mean, the fix for that will probably be there immediately. This is 180503, but for now, the solution is to first drag in an image file. Get the timeline, drag it to the timeline. And then now you can drag in videos. And now everything works as it should be. So now we're gonna enable the keyframes panel here. It appears at the same area where the timeline is. We're gonna just separate them so we can look at them at the same time. I'm actually gonna move this all. Hello, hello. can I drag you please? Dragging. What's going on here? Oh yeah. Okay, let's press this button to detach it. So we have a timeline here. And I'm gonna actually put it at the top because that's, we really want to be able to see this. And let's uh, put it next to each other. So we're gonna split it and here in the middle, here the timeline begins and here the keyframes begin. Now let's enable filters and also properties. Where are the properties? Here they are. All right, so filters, we're gonna add the gain slash volume filter first. Gain slash audio filter, here it is, it's in my favorites. Down here, ah, I, I think I see now why people often don't see these icons. They are not directly below this, but they are at the very bottom. So here, gains, whoop, let's do it again gain slash volume in the audio filter section. So now we suddenly have this uh, clip in this area, in the keyframes area. I'm gonna make this a little bigger again. How do we, ah oh yeah, shift mouse wheel to uh, do this vertically. And what we can do is we can just drag these things. Let's listen in. Look over here. Isn't this great? You can see the level change live. All right, what do we have here? 
Use keyframes for this parameter. Oh, 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 we have complex keyframes. All right. So now we can actually, what can we do with these? We can drag these around? No? Well, I'm a bit confused, but I guess we can just change it. Yeah, we can change this one. And perhaps we can, can we insert a keyframe here? Show, no, no, no features yet. Uh, this will remove all keyframes. Okay. So there's uh, like a little difference between keyframes. Uh, these keyframes and uh, these keyframes. Interesting. So I really wonder... Ah, I see. Each time we change the value, automatically a new keyframe gets added. We cannot remove... Can we remove keyframes? Whoops. Remove the whole clip. Didn't want to do that. So we cannot do that yet. But we can control this at a certain complexity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is pretty cool. All right, I can definitely see issues with this system so far, but this is extremely freaking promising. We can make star systems already. There is no... there's only linear interpolation between these keyframes as far as I can tell so far. But it's fine. Hey, actually, we can delete them, can't we? There is after... oh yeah, and we can navigate them as well. We can use this icon to delete, delete them. What am I saying? Excellent, excellent, real good. All right. Now it's all... empty. All right, what we're gonna do next... I think this is all for the gain slash volume filter. Let's get rid of this for now. Here. The next up, we're going to check out the brightness filter. Let's just get the brightness in here. Uh, video filter section brightness. All right, here we go. Yeah, it has the same thing. We can do it with these simple in and out thingies. And it just starts at uh, zero. We can actually change the start value, the middle value. And the end value, which I think, yeah, we can we look closely. It starts somewhere in the middle. And then it doesn't have to go to the same value. We have, in the basic mode, we have three keyframes. Or, let's say four. We have uh, the first keyframe, the end keyframe, and these two keyframes, which we can move around, and everything between them stays the same. Very, I mean, this is the most common use of keyframes, really. Or something at the end and something at the uh, beginning. Sure. So this is it for the brightness. We can also add these ones. Um, just like with the volume slider. We can add as much complexity as we like. Let's go crazy a little. Let's make it uh, really annoying. Let's do it. Also, let's see. If we zoom... Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just uh, up to the top there. We need more space. We can move up a little and just play this back a little. So annoying, but it works. Do it again. Uh, this. Strobe lights. All right, very nice. Back to no filter. Now we're going to try out the circular frame HTML filter. Where is that thing? Come on, let's get you out. You, we will get you down here. Okay, that ought to be good. All right, so now we're going to add uh, what we did, the HTML circular. Uh, circular frame HTML filter, here it is. And we're just going to look at what it looks like. Please don't crash. Okay, nothing happens. Let's drag this. It grows and it stays at 50%. And then it... Nothing. But yeah, we have to move them first. Okay, I can't move anything. There we go. And again, it grows and it gets smaller, right? Right. Looney Tunes effect achieved. Now we're going to convert this to keyframe uh, mode. And let's make more space for that. Here we are. And again, we can just add new keyframes by changing the value. Go a bit nuts. Because why the heck not? Uh, we can change the color by keyframe. That's that's okay. We 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 whoa yo. That's it for the keyframing of the circular frame effect. Let's get rid of that. Next up, we're gonna check out the color grading one. 
uh, which apparently has no simple keyframes. So that's interesting to see. Where is that color grading? Color grading is here. So we don't have these uh, handles we can use with the other effects, which is totally cool with me. Why did I enable properties? We don't need that. Ugh, my bad. All right, here we go. A filter in here. Mm, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? All right, so we have these keyframes. Uh, we can keyframe with these three elements uh, separate from one another. Let's see, can we move this down here perhaps? It would seem like it makes sense. Let's just restart shortcut real quick. Okay, no crash. So can we, yeah, now we can get it back. All right. So if we click on this, okay, this I think is an issue where uh, having the first thing selected will kind of not have an effect in this area. So if we add a clip, click on here. Okay, now it's restored. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep this around for, for just for this purpose. So we can click on it and then click on this uh, video clip again. Okay, so here we have the keyframing pane uh, panel. Let's just zoom in a little. And now we're going to add uh, keyframes for this and for this and for this. And we get, for each of them, we get one line. So let's uh, modify, oh, I don't know, 50%, uh, one, what, uh, one, one, 10%, 90%, and play around some more, 2%, 3%, and uh, over here, maybe 44%. And now let's take a look at how this looks when we play it back. Bit messy. Quite trippy, quite funky. I mean, I'm sure somebody else will do something more sensible with this effect. Right, let's get rid of it and go to the next one, which is opacity, which is uh, perfect for transitions, or more interesting transitions, I suppose. Let's get a new uh, video track for that. Add video track, let's get uh, some more clips in here. I guess we're gonna get sleepy. Sleepy here. Let's cut it here, get rid of this. All right, we're gonna actually add the uh, rotate. Where are you? Rotate and scale. Is that your name? Just rotate is the name. We're gonna scale you down. This effect does not have keyframes, unfortunately. It, uh, it really needs some. It's uh, an awesome effect. All right, so now we're gonna add the actual filter we wanna try out, which is opacity. Here it is, and this one has keyframing. It also has the basic handlers, and if we use them, then this clip will just fade in and fade out. Perfect. Let's enable the keyframe ability, the complex keyframes, and now we can just uh, make it more active. Definitely not something you want to do. Unless you have a really good reason. All right, fit in, fit out, fit in, fit out, fit in, fit out. All right, all right, it works, it works, it works. Final filter to try out, which I already know works. Uh, I did a whole video about it. Size and position, and this is the most useful one right now, because this one can scale over time. Here it is. It has the handlers by default. Man, I'm probably using the word wrong. What are these? I mean, these grabby circles. Anyways, if we use this, the clip will just slide in from the left and then slide out to the right. Zip. Too bad my computer gets into laggy mode. Uh, right, but uh, we cannot do complex keyframing, unfortunately. Only simple so far. No curve UI, as they call it. But it's, it's still very good. If you want to keyframe a section of your clip, let's just... For safety, remove this, split this. If you just want to zoom in on something uh, for a short bit, you just use this, size and position, this, do that, reset this for the first keyframe to zero, and for the last keyframe to zero. And now, um, yeah, you do the size, you, you, let's just double it. 3840 and uh, 2160. Right. But it zoomed in on the corner, so we have to actually manually adjust. Wait a second, can we do this center and middle? No, no. 
center. No, this doesn't work. We cannot modify these, unfortunately. Oh, well. Minus 960, right? Maybe. And um, minus 1080 or half of... Yeah. Minus uh, 540. You gotta do some math with this stuff. Super quick, zoom in, zoom out. Totally awesome. Anyways, now you can do this. You can just zoom in on stuff and zoom out smoothly. I like to call it smooth zoom. All right, so that's it for the keyframe support and filters so far. Now we're gonna look at the other features and we're just gonna try out the export feature for GIF. Where, oh, here it is, GIF, GIF, GIF animation. GIF, GIF, GIF. Okay, let's just do whatever settings are here. Test.GIF. And yeah, I'm running out of space of my, on my SSD, but that's fine. Here it is, 80, 88, right? All right. So if we just drag it in here, works perfectly fine. Size, by the way, is 41 megabytes, so don't do that really, but it works. I mean, you should just change the size. Nice. There's also a translation to finish. Mm, yeah, let's, let's restart. All right, I can't read any of that. Suo Ciment, filters. Nothing selected. That one's not translated yet. And if we go back to, Eng oh, 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 yes, here's English, all right. And also uh, for those who know stuff about video file formats in detail, GOP has been changed and B frames has been changed. The numbers have been increased, if I understand correctly, so that the output file size will be smaller. Good thing. I think it's good. People complain a lot about uh, file size. They probably complain less about quality. It's probably easier to tell the people how to increase quality than how to reduce file size. All right, so apart from that, let's now try out 5.1 channels, six channels. Uh, 7.1 is not supported yet, as far as I understand. So for safety, we're just gonna add an image, add it to the timeline, and now we're gonna add a 5.1 audio, add it to the timeline. All right, let's, let's hear it. I mean, I'm recording in stereo, so don't, you're not gonna actually hear it. Can you hear the 5.1-ness? I'm sure you can. All right, so what do we do about this? We can basically go to properties, check it out, and we can see... Come on now. In the audio tab, that it has a one six channel uh, audio track. That's basically it, as far as, far as I understand. I don't know. Do, can we export this as a six channel video? Uh, yeah, we can. We can. We totally can export it with five point one channel. So that's awesome. Uh, let's just try that out. We're gonna cut this, remove this, remove that. Cut this, remove that, and then we're, then we're just going to test whether that worked. So, uh, 5.1. Yeah, 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 let's just do it. Where's the video at? Here it is. All right, all right, all right. All right, it's done. And now if we test it, I'm just going to pause it. Control I for current media information. It will disappear if uh, we play it back and the video ends. Uh, very weird about VLC, but also kind of makes sense. So now let's check out codec and what does it say about audio stream, free front to rear and low field emission? What's LFE? Low frequency effects. All right, makes sense. Subwoofer, basically. So it is kind of trying to tell us, yep, this video has six channels, so that's good. And if we drag this back in here, don't crash. Then we can, uh, let's see, properties, where are you? Here you are. Then we can again see, oops, wrong tab, yep, six channels. So after we export it with the setting of six channels, it still has six channels. So this is it for the 18 point, or shortcut 18.5.3 or 18.05.03. Keyframes are amazing. Keyframes are amazing. I am so happy to <laughs> live a day where this feature gets added to shortcut. It's awesome. So let's uh, hope the best for the future development of Shotcut and look, let's look forward to uh, awesome new videos made with these features. I hope you had fun enjoying the new uh, keyframe filters and the 5.1-ness 
And I will see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you then. Ciao!